The important thing is the star map that Betty saw. I strongly recommend the book or the television movie, which gets shown every once in a while, The UFO Incident. James Earl Jones, Estelle Parsons. I was technical advisor on the film, referred to Universal by the Air Force, which I don't understand at all, but it happened. I'm glad. Uh, Betty saw a star map that looked like this. Supposedly heavy trade routes, light trade routes, occasional um, excursions is the word I'm looking for. Uh, she asked the alien, where are you on the map? Wise guy says, do you know where you are? No, how can I tell you where I'm from if you don't know where you're at? End of discussion. <laughs> Dr. Simon uh, has her go over it again. She draws it. This is what came out. It's in the book. Probably will never know what it means. Obviously, there's no reference point. There's a couple hundred billion stars in the galaxy. Obviously, they're not there. There are thousands of stars in a local neighborhood. Obviously, they're not there. Hopeless, it seemed. Until a brilliant woman named Marjorie Fish did something nobody else had ever done. She built a total, I think now it's up to 26, three-dimensional models of our local galactic neighborhood. Here's one of her best ones from Ohio State University. Use it as a teaching tool. Every one of those beads stands for a particular star in its proper three-dimensional location. Now, the hard part here, we know the angles to look at for a star from here. But we don't know the distances very well. Because astronomers aren't going anywhere. What difference does it make how far or how near the stars are? She thought she'd get a lot of matches. The idea was to look at it from all different directions. So she found a three-dimensional pattern that matched the two-dimensional one that Betty had drawn. Didn't get a match. Then a new catalog came out with the best distance data ever published, the Gleesey 1968 catalog. Rebuilt the model. There was the pattern, angle for angle, line length for line length. It was a great day for Marjorie. This is the sun. Several special things. All the pattern stars are the right kind for planets and life. Remember, only 46 out of 1,000 qualify, and yet not only are all the pattern stars the right kind for planets and life, but all the right kind for planets and life in this well-defined three-dimensional volume of space are part of the pattern. Coming and going, you got it both ways. All the right kind and only the right kind. The chance of that being a coincidence you grab a dozen stars, and they just happen to be all the right kind, and only the right kind. One in 10,000. It is not a coincidence. Turns out, incidentally, that all the pattern stars are in a plane, like thin slices of pepperoni on a very thin pepperoni pizza, not like raisins in a big fat loaf of raisin bread. That's never been discovered before. It's very helpful when you're traveling to stay in the plane. Instead of having to go out of the plane, it takes much more energy. Uh, nobody doing what Marjorie did back when the experience happened in 61. But the book came out, The Interrupted Journey, in 66. Could have identified the stars properly because the correct distance data wasn't available until after 1968. The only source of the correct information, in other words, at the time this event took place, was somebody who'd been away from our solar system. And none of us had been, so it must be alien. If you want to know the names of the neighboring stars and get a scale, Here's the sun. These distances are in light years, 27 light years, 26 light years. Nearest star to the sun is four and a half light years away. Nearest star we expect to have planets in life to us, SETI 11 light years away. 36.6 light years, call it 37, we'll be generous. The base stars, the heavy trade routes between them, Zeta 1 and Zeta 2 reticuli. To which the normal response is, who cares? Never heard of those two dumb-sounding stars. Of course you haven't heard of them. You can't see them from here. You've got to go below the equator. Anything special? Well, yes, as it happens. They're unique. They're the closest to each other pair of sun-like stars in our entire local neighborhood. A hundred times closer to each other than the sun is to the next star over. They're lousy three light weeks apart. It's a weekend trip at the right speed. Now, we're so far out in the boondocks, we don't see the smoke from the next guy's chimney. These guys got next door neighbors. It wouldn't be surprising if they got started on their interstellar travel kick a little bit before we did. You can see the other star all day long. You can directly observe planets around the other star. And in addition, those two stars are only a billion years older than the sun. 
something we wouldn't have known except for Marjorie Fish's work. I did the first article on this work in 1972 in Saga Magazine, convinced uh, Terry Dickinson of, si of uh, Astronomy Magazine, then the editor, to do an article. Uh, Terry is Canada's finest astronomy writer. He's even a member of the Order of Canada. Uh, he did the article that got more response than anything they've ever published before or since. They published over the next year in the early 70s nine more letters. Then they put out this 32-page full-color booklet and immediately sold 10,000 copies. Unheard of for this kind of thing. 